Hey everybody, um, on this edition I'm going to be showing you how to do the, um, how to use Celtics, um, it's a free, um, downloader, they, oh, free download that you can get, and you can basically write movie scripts and stuff like that on it, I've used it a little bit, um, lately, i um, mostly just used Word in the past, and, um, yeah, so, um, let's get started, um, I've already downloaded, like, Maya, and Mudbox, and Blender, and all that stuff for free already, um, obviously I've got Celtics on here. But, um, I'll show you where to find the download, actually. Um, first you want to go into Firefox, well, you can also use Safari, and then you want to go to, um, the Celtics website, which is right here. Just, um, put that into your, um, URL, and you are pretty much set to go. Um, you want to go down here, and then you want to make an, an, a Celtics account, and, um, you'll get the verification code um, on your email account that you provide and then you can verify that and then go back in here and then you can download Celtics and it's absolutely free um don't need to buy anything for it it's pretty much free to use um I'm gonna exit out of that and um what you need to do first is boot up Celtics obviously um I've got here my couple of other projects um this these are my past two tutorials and these both didn't work so we're gonna be doing a new one um Go to film and basically yeah, right here you've got your list of stuff you can do with it. You can do dialogue here, you can do characters, you can do action, stuff like that, and scene headings. Um over here you've got your individual scenes. So once you create something in here, like a scene heading and then your dialogue and stuff like that, which goes down here, it'll save it down to here and you will be able to um go back easily and find your individual scenes, it'll list it for you. So um over here you can obviously add notes and stuff like that. I haven't really delved into that. Um I don't really write notes when I'm writing a script. I like to just write the script and um not have to worry about notes and stuff like that after. Um I know some motion pictures they actually have notes and then they've got um storyboards and stuff like that on the side which helps you visualize what the scene's going to look like and sort of understand what they're going to be saying. It helps um like figure out how long the movie's going to be when they're actually doing a read through of it. Um so first thing you want to do is you want to do scene heading, which basically lists your stuff like um, your exterior sets, your location, your shot, and then um, your day or night um, descriptions. You actually want to list all that stuff just because it helps the person that's reviewing it um, or looking over, whether it's a producer or a director or an actor or something like that. They're going to want to know where this scene is taking place and what's going on in it. So... Um, I'm going to do a short little video on how to do that. Um, first you want to go and type in something like this, um, EXT, which basically means exterior shot. Um, obviously exterior meaning the outside of a building or a location or just a place in general. Um, interior obviously is your, uh, your inside, like your bedrooms, your just wherever the inside area of your scene is taking place. Right now, I'm not going to go through that. Um, I'm just going to quickly breeze through this, and I'm going to try not to say um through the rest of this video. I know I tend to say that a lot, but that's kind of what I'm thinking and trying to figure out what I'm going to say. I'm going to plug that in, and then you want to do your um, shot scene, which is like medium shot. Um, when you're establishing a new scene, you want to obviously use long shot because you're establishing the location and the place where the action is going to take place. Um, I might just change that back just to make things easier. Medium shot is obviously like, it's basically a profile view, like a, kind of a torso on up. And um, close up shot, which would be CS. They've got their little shortened names. LS is actually obviously long shot. Um, medium shot is actually MS. And then um, close up shot would be CU. They've all got their little naming conventions just to make things a little bit simpler and easier to use and easier to read when you're reading a script on the page. And then obviously you want to go here and do like something like burning house. And then you want to um, actually say whether it's day or night. Um, it, it just helps to list what time of the day it is. If because most of the times when you're writing a script, it's going to either take place during the day or night. Um, you can actually cut between the two at times and do sort of montage shots, which you would obviously write, but I'm not going to go fully in depth. This is just the basics of how to use it. So for this 
little thing in this tutorial we're gonna act, I'm gonna actually just do on night just because it sounds cooler and then right here is where your action is gonna take place usually it's only two or three sentences sometimes a little bit longer depending on the length of the action that's going on you don't really want to go over that because when produ production companies are looking at your stuff or a producer is looking at your stuff you don't want to have too much like amount of text on a sheet of paper because that just looks it's just hard to read and they're gonna pass up your script whether it's good or bad and it looks like you're an amateur at doing this um so yeah that, that's kind of why you do it and then after that you put your dialogue you do your character name first and then your character name the dialogue goes underneath the character name and it's just the standard convention it's how the scripts are written it's how plays are sometimes written a little bit so I'm going to do something here, let's see, um, watches, building, front, obviously you can do him or her depending on what, who the main character is, you don't always want to all the time have the same character but sometimes if you're gonna write more male characters you can obviously do that if you're gonna write more female characters if you have a mix of male female characters you can do whatever you really want to when you're writing a script it just it depends on the story it depends on the script it depends on what you're writing um that's basically all you're doing um Sorry, I kind of had to like think about that for a little bit. Um, I was just trying to figure out what what sounded best for this. Obviously, you want to have a clear visual um, mind of what you want to do and how to convey that onto the page. Obviously, this is a little bit. Um, my last couple of run throughs were a little bit better. I actually think this might actually be better, but who knows? Um, I'm not going for whether it's good or bad it's just for a tutorial so after that um after this what you want to do is then introduce your main character which you want to move down in the middle of the page it just again makes it more easier to read and easier for the actors what you want to do is you want to bold and caps lock your um keyboard do like main character and how you bold is you can either bold it right there or you can do it beforehand. I choose to write my main character name out first and then bold it later after highlighting it just because it works easier than having to go through and make sure that it's bolded. Um, sometimes it doesn't do it correctly and then you have to go back and do it anyway. So I just figured this is the easier way. I'm going to recenter it so it just looks nicer on the page. Um, and then underneath is where you want to write your dialogue. Obviously, it's the same kind of convention as your main character where you want to space it out. You want to have your dialogue underneath. Sometimes when it's a little bit of text, you want it to be underneath the main character just because just cause it looks nicer and it's easier to read and you're not reading a whole line at the side or towards the right side of the page. That might look good on some things, but for movie scripts and stuff like that, you obviously want to do it as clean and neat as possible so someone that's reading through it will read through it, get excited about what you're doing, and hopefully buy your um, script later on. Uh, it doesn't happen often, but if you have something that they're interested in and it, and it looks nice and neat, then they're more willing to buy it from you than, let's say, a sloppy script written with mounds of text on it and just... They're just like, I can't sit through and read this. Um, pass, and they'll go to the next script. So let's say... Uh, 
I'm going to change that and turn off the caps lock. Move it over there so it's like that. Um, yeah, so obviously that's kind of how you want to do it. Obviously, for a larger amount of text, which may be two or three lines or maybe an entire paragraph, for me, like if you're having a character that's speaking a lot, um, you might want to cut it down, but sometimes it's okay to go over a little bit if they're explaining something crucial into the story. You might do a full paragraph or something like that. For the main character for this particular thing I'm doing, I'm not really going to do that. So we're just going to go over to the next scene. Um, you want sometimes it'll change the scene heading for you. Sometimes you might have to manually go in there and change the scene. So we're going to do, do um, another one. This time, change it and be int, which will be interior shot. L at uh, no, do medium shot and do. Burning house night. And then sometimes if you're continuing scene on from the last scene you shot, you want to write continued on it. No, like for how many times you're continuing the shot if it's in the same scene for a while. Just because it's easier to, if you're doing like a back and forth type of thing or just in general if you feel it fits. Um, obviously you want to study scripts, movie scripts, and you want to watch movies a lot just because you can see how they're made and um, when you need to use the continued and when you don't. And sometimes like just in setting up the script in general it kind of helps. I've been watching movies and studying that stuff for a while now so I kind of know where it is. But um, let's just go through this. Uh, Now what I might have wanted to do is actually make this an EXT for this and then after that do it in the um, INT because if I'm having a character that's hearing something like a scream or something I might want to show him hearing the person which would be outside and then see him r coming in rushing in which I might need to change the scene and then I would have it be an interior scene but just to, for the sake of time I'm just going to leave it like that. Um, heading in the direction of the crack terror. That sounds a little bit good. Um, obviously I probably would have changed it a little bit just to make it seem a little bit more natural. Um, you want to describe what's going on and then after that you can add in the character dialogue again or introduce a new character of which you'd have to do the same exact thing you did for this. But, um, it, it's pretty much the same. Um, so yeah, that, that's pretty much how you use Celtix. I'm going to show you how to save. You want to save it, go to save, project as, and then you want to save it into a area where like you normally save project files, um, such as like Word or your Celtic files if you want to create a new folder and stick it in there, and then that'll be your Celtix folder. Um, I'll just call this burning house blah 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 and then go down and then I'm gonna go save this into screen cap and then hit save and that's pretty much how you use Celtics